And we're back. So now we're going to talk about the second of the business, government, and society models. We've discussed the market capitalism model, and now we're going to talk about the dominance model. I would like to point out that spell checkers are really good for highlighting spelling mistakes and yet every semester someone when they were referring to the dominance model on an exam or written assignment frequently makes very humorous spelling mistakes around the dominance model I won't clarify those in this video but we can talk about them during office hours if you like so how does the dominance model work? Well first of all you've got these You've got these environmental forces operating in the background. These environmental forces are kind of like the socio-political environment in the market capitalism model in the sense that the environmental forces set the rules of the game. They define what is and is not possible uh, to do under the dominance model. Okay? Now, the actor that's directly impacted by the restrictions of the environmental forces would be, of course, business and government. So business and government are kind of at the top of the pyramid. They're the ones in charge. They are, under the dominance model, the haves of society. Okay? They have the power. They have the control. They have the money. But who are they dominating? Well, they are actually dominating the masses. The implication being, if you are not a member of the business government elite, you are part of the masses. You are a nobody. You are being crushed by the elites at the top. Okay. Now, this perspective represents the beliefs of business critics. And people that ascribe to this model believe that corporations and a powerful elite control kind of a system that enriches a very few people at the expense of many. Okay, so what kinds of theories might go very well with the dominance model? Here. Well, the first is populism. Populism is something that we're going to talk an awful lot about in this course, but it's more or less a kind of a political pattern that pretty much pops up periodically through, throughout world history uh, where common people feel oppressed or disadvantaged and they want to take power from a ruling elite. And they're seen as, uh, this ruling elite is seen as thwarting the collective welfare. So our first theory is populism. Now, you see examples of populism all the time. I, and I'm not endorsing any poli particular political candidate or political ideology. But you'll notice that in every single election, there is kind of a populist candidate. Okay? So today, you might actually say that it's Donald Trump. Previously, it was people like Ron Paul. These are people that kind of say, we're going to we're vote for me and you can stick it to the man. Now, some people might say that populism has its roots in early agrarian uh, movements. You know, farmers feeling disadvantaged or oppressed by the, the wealthy elite. However, I would argue that populism has been around as long as societies have 
been around. I mean, you think about some of the populist movements that have occurred uh, throughout history. Probably the one of the most famous ones was the Spartacus Rebellion in ancient Rome. Some of you may have also seen the TV show. But basically, you had a gladiator who led other gladiators and slaves against the might of the Roman Empire. This is a great example of a populist movement that has absolutely nothing to do with contemporary American history. So populism has really existed for a very much a long time. Another movement, or another theory, that um, in some ways has certain populist elements is Marxism. So Marxism was popularized by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. And they basically say that workers should revolt against property-owning capitalists who exploit them. They should replace this kind of economic and political domination of the business and governmental elite with a more equal and democratic socialist institution. Okay? So for Marx... And again, I want you to think about this. With these models, you can interchange a variety of characters uh, for the model. They looked at the masses, and they called them a proletariat. Proletariat is an urban factory worker. Okay? The business and government kind of allegiance would, would be what they called the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie were the property-owning middle class of industrialized Germany. And it's not going to stay up there. Either. So they were the 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 um, the bourgeoisie were the pop property owning the factory owners of Germany. And so what they were advocating was that the proletariat, the masses, would rise up and change the structure of the pyramid during a period of revolution. So that you actually had the masses on top, and business and government underneath, which would eventually shift into some sort of dictatorship of the proletariat, and everyone would eventually become equal. That's what Marx was talking about. 